G'day, this is Mr. Thompson. I wanted to give you a quick video, hopefully it's a quick video, about accuracy and precision um, and how to evaluate the validity and the reliability of your experimental data. So I guess first, what is accuracy and precision and what's validity and reliability? Um, here are some definitions, here we go. Um, so accuracy means how close was your average result to the true or expected result. Um, and accuracy is sometimes called validity. So when you, uh, when you hear about validity, um, think accuracy. So those two are almost synonymous. Um, now precision is how consistent your results were. Um, and when you uh, hear about precision, think about reliability. So, so re precision and reliability go together and accuracy and validity go together. So, all right, now what does that actually mean? Let's look at some examples. This is an example that's used um, a lot, but it's a pretty good one. Um, let's say I'm down at a shooting range and I want to work out how good a shot I am. So I take my first shot and uh, aiming at the bullseye of the target, of course, and there we go, I get a bullseye. Does that mean that I'm a good shot? Does that mean, I mean, I guess it does, but because uh, I got the bullseye on the first go, but um, what if I took a whole bunch of shots? Um, was that first shot a fluke? Would I be consistent? Would I, would I, would I be accurate or precise? Um, well, look, I can't answer those questions at the moment because I don't have enough data. So let's take a few more shots, eh? All right, so um, I fire off a few rounds and I find out that this is how I go. All right, that's pretty good. So I would say uh, from that shooting that I am both accurate and precise. I'm accurate because the my average shot, if I was to sort of take the average of all those shots, find the center of all those shots, it would be on the bullseye. I would say that my shooting is precise because all of my shots landed really close together. So this is both accurate shooting and precise shooting. All right, um, let's say on another day, or I had another uh, attempt at shooting um, the target here, and uh, let's see how I go this time. All right, so this time, um, all of my shots have been um, very close together, but they're not on the bullseye. What I would say about my shooting in this this time as I would say my shooting is precise but it's not accurate so it's precise in that I get the exactly the same results every time I take my shot they're, they're all well not exactly but they're all very very close together so I would say that's very high precision shooting but it's not accurate shooting now what might have caused an error like that um, maybe my sights were out, maybe my sights weren't adjusted properly. So my technique was really good and uh, uh, I'm doing everything right, but uh, um, there is uh, my sights are not adjusted correctly and that's causing me to shoot precisely, but not accurately. All right, um, another day I come down here and I have a, shoot, uh, have a shot at the target. Let's see what I get. All right, this time um, I would say that my, well, my shooting is not precise anymore, is is it? My, my shooting is all over the place. Um, all of the bullets haven't landed in the same spot. But I guess I could make an argument that I was accurate because if I look at the average, where, where is the center of all those shots? The center of all those shots is going to be pretty close to the bullseye, isn't it? So I would actually say that my shooting is accurate but not precise, accurate, but not precise. Now I wonder what would cause, what could cause that? I guess maybe, um, maybe I was tired that day and, uh, uh, or, or nervous and I was shaking uh, and my technique was bad and I sort of sprayed the shots all over the place. That, that might be a cause of that kind of shooting. So that's, that's good accuracy, but my precision is poor. All right, um, let's have a look at one more example. What about this one? Okay, now in this case, I would say my precision is poor, but I would also say that my accuracy is poor. So this is neither accurate 
nor it's precise. It's not accurate because um, the center, the average of all my shots, is not on the bullseye. And it's not precise because my shots all didn't go in the same place. All right, so let's summarize. Um, here's our first our first result was good accuracy because all of our bullets were on the bullseye and, uh, well, and good precision because they were all close together. Uh, if we move across to this um, top right target here, this one was good accuracy because our shots were centered around the bullseye, um, but it was poor precision because the shots weren't consistent. Um, so I would say here my reliability is poor, and I would also say that um, this shows that there was some random error, some random error. So random error is error that affects um, each shot slightly differently um, in a random sort of way. So for example, if I was nervous and I was shaking um, and I sprayed the bullets all over the place, um, but still had accuracy because on the whole, my shots were uh, centered around the bullseye. All right, down the left here, we've got poor accuracy and good precision. So the good precision is because all my shots were um, consistent. I had good reliability, um, but I had poor accuracy because they're not going where they should go. They're not on the bullseye. Now, and we said the sort of error that could cause this um, is uh, perhaps my sights weren't adjusted correctly. And that is an example of systematic error systematic error. So systematic error is some, something that affects um, my experiment in the same way every time, has the same effect on every shot. So that's uh, so the sights being not adjusted correctly could be systematic error. All right, and this last example over here on the bottom right is poor accuracy because my shots aren't centered on the bullseye and poor precision because my shots are sprayed all over the place. So in this situation here, I would have, have systematic error and random error. Uh, I would have both kinds of error affecting my shot. All right, so now let's look at an, ex at an experiment and work out whether we have got good accuracy or precision. So here's my uh, data here. Um, now, have I got good accuracy or have I got pr good precision and how do I know? All right, the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at all my trials. So if I look at each row, so let's look at this row here, so this row across here, um, there's a few things I can see here. The first thing I can see is see uh, all of my values here, all of my times are pretty consistent. 0 0.57, 0 0.50, 0 0.59, 0 0.53, uh, 0 0.50, 0 0.54, they're all pretty well point that's the point five four is the average um, they're all pretty consistent there so that looks like good precision to me and in fact I can confirm that if I look at the uncertainty of the mean I've got a quite a small value 0 0.05 is quite small compared with the actual times themselves so um, that looks like good precision so in fact if I look at all of my rows here they're all fairly consistent and if I look at all of my uncertainties of the mean they're all pretty small numbers. So that's a pretty good sign that I've got good, precise data. All right, another way I can tell if I've got precise data is let's look at the graph. See the graph here? Um, that graph, see the dots that are, that are on my uh, line of best fit? All of the dots, all my data points are actually pretty close to the line. And in fact, I put a R squared value on this line here, and my R squared value, which is a measure of how closely the dots fit on the line, roughly speaking, um, the R squared value is very close to one. It's 0 0.9984. If all of those dots were perfectly on the line, then my R squared value would be exactly one. So an R squared value that's close to one indicates that you've got good precision in your data. An R squared uh, value that's not close to one means, well, your precision's, precision is not so good. All right, hey, let's have a look at this graph over here, this one here as well. See, all my points are pretty close to the line, and my R squared value 0.9942 is also pretty high. So I reckon that's pretty good precision. What would poor precision look like? Well, I've got some, some data here that's not quite as good precision. So again, if I start at my table, and if I look at some of my rows here, um, let's look at, I don't know, um, let's look at this row here. See this row here, look at the times. 1.59, 1.56, 2.54, 1.56, 1.59. Look, on the whole, 
there's reasonably good precision. That one there, that 2.54, I could argue that that one's an outlier. So I could say, you know what, there's, um, it's good precision except for the outlier. But if I took all that data as a whole, I'd say my precision's not that great. Let's look at another one. Let's look at this bottom one here. Um, 1 1.50, 2.01, 1.81, 1.54, 1.81. Again, that's spread a little bit all over the place. Um, that's certainly not as consistent. If I compare that with, a, look at that bottom row there, and if I compare that with this bottom row here, that bottom row is a lot more precise than that bottom row there. And in fact, the, the easy way to look at that is to look at my uncertainties of the mean. So remember, uh, in if I've got precise data, let's look at my precise data, the uncertainties of the mean are all 0, 0.0 something. They're nice, small um, uncertainties with my imprecise data see my uncertainties of the mean are quite large I've got 0 0.29 0 0.07 that's a good one 0 0.18 0 0.21 so my uncertainties of the mean are much larger so that tells me my precision here is not great now if I look at my graph I can see that my data points are not sitting nicely on the line See, let's have a look I'm going back to my precise data again see there's my precise data all the points are sitting on the line there's my imprecise data. My data points are a bit all over the place. And my R squared value here, remember my R squared value, value for my precise data is 0 0.9984. Uh, my R squared value is here is 0 0.9405. So that's not as close to one. So my data is not as precise um, in this graph here. And similarly with this graph here, again, my, my data points, I can see they're not on the line of best fit. And my R squared value here is even worse at 0 0.8668. So it's further away from one. So I'd say both of these, for this kind of experiment, I'd say my precision uh, on both of these uh, graphs here, uh, the precision of my experiment overall, is not great. Okay, let's go back to the precise data. Let's ask another question. Is my data accurate? So all of my data points may have been nice and close to the line, but is that the correct line over here? If, um, all my data points again, they're all pretty close to the line, but is that line correct? Is the slope of that line correct? Um, if the slope of the line is correct, we might is correct, um, then we would have accurate data. If the slope of the line is not even correct, our data might be precise, but it not, might not be accurate. Okay, so how are we going to work that out? Now, you might recall that um, we said the slope of a velocity time graph was uh, is, is the acceleration. The meaning of the slope is the acceleration. And here's the slope here, 0 0.611, oh, 0 0.6121 is the slope of this line. And uh, so we put that up here. So the, the experimental acceleration, according to our experiment, According to the data from our experiment, our acceleration was 0 0.6121 meters per second per second. But down here, we calculated according to physics formulas, according to the law of physics, the slope of the graph, the theoretical acceleration, should have been 0 0.86 meters per second per second. So I would argue that 0.61, the difference between 0.61 and 0.86 is quite significant. So what that tells me is the slope of this line here, this line here should have actually been a fair bit steeper. It should have been, what's that going to be, 20% um, or so? I don't know, you can do the math. Um, it's, it's significant, there's a significant difference between the experimental acceleration and the acceleration that we were expecting if we used some physics formulas. So there's been something in this experiment, some systematic error in this experiment has caused our times to be longer than they should be every time we've done a trial. I wonder what that could be um, that has slowed our trolley down every time we did uh, the repeat of our experiment. Uh, I'll leave that for you to work out and to put into your report. All right, so look, let's just summarize. Uh, we learnt, we've learned now that accuracy is how close our average result is to the true or expected result, and accuracy is sometimes called validity. Uh, what's the validity of our experiment means the same as what's the accuracy of, it, accuracy of our experiment, and uh, accuracy is affected by 
systematic error, some sort of error that affects all of the trials in the same way. Um, and precision is how consistent your results were. Precision is sometimes called reliability. So if we ask how reliable your experiment was, uh, what's the reliability of your data? What we're talking about is, is the precision, how consistent our results were. And precision is affected by random error, some sort of error that affected each experiment in a slightly different way. Okay, I hope that helps.